Welcome back. From the village of Hong Kong's Big Wave Bay, I'm Christy Lou Stout. Now, 10 years ago, the Toyota Prius hit the scene. It was the first mass market hybrid, and it was a game changer. But now the stage is set for a new type of green car powered by electricity. Andrew Stevens takes a spin to try to find out what it means for drivers to go electric. More than half the world's population now lives in cities. Hong Kong is, in many ways, a typical city for the 21st century. Densely populated, a hub of modernity, affluence, and all that comes with that. Traffic jams and smog-filled streets. So, is the answer an electric car? Well, I've got Mitsubishi's iMeve here. It's 100% electric. Let's see how it works. Well, the car is now on and ready to go. And the only reason I know that is because there's a green ready sign that's just lit up on the dashboard. Otherwise, I hear nothing. Mitsubishi hopes that the iMeve will have early mover advantage on the electric vehicle market. But it won't be easy. There's growing competition globally from the likes of Nissan and GM. It also took hybrid cars 10 years just to reach 3% market penetration. Top speed of the iMeve is 130 kilometers, so not particularly fast, but to be honest, you don't need speed in Hong Kong. The biggest issue, perhaps, range. After 72 kilometers, the battery runs out. So now is the time to start looking for recharging. So this is what you need, which comes with the car. It's the power cable. Fairly simple, a normal point plug at one end, which goes into a wall socket. And on the other end, the plug into the battery. Simple. Now, if I were filling this up, it would cost me about two US dollars worth of electricity. But there is a catch here. The cable is five meters long and you cannot use an extension cord. You have to plug it directly into a power point. So if you're any more than five meters away from a power point, you can't charge your car. So the all electric Mitsubishi iMeve, one of a growing number of this type of car designed really for the practicalities in life. Getting the kids to school, going and picking up the shopping. Sounds a bit boring, a little humdrum, but it doesn't have to be because you've got this. The technology under the hood of the Tesla is game changing. And getting behind the wheel of one, well, it completely defies all expectations of what an electric car should be. <laughs> Unbelievable. The power on this car is astonishing. The acceleration really takes your breath away. This is a 288 horsepower car compared with the iMeve, which was all of 64 horsepower. We didn't speed up that footage either. It's that quick. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.7 seconds. And a much bigger range too up to 390 kilometers, says Tesla. But with its $120,000 price tag, it's not exactly a car for the masses. Compare that to around $50,000 for the Mitsubishi. Even in the rain with the top down, it's fun. The Tesla has certainly pushed the boundaries of electric vehicle technology. The company's IPO in June, which raised a higher than expected $220 million, is testament to the potential of electric cars. But getting drivers to buy in, in big numbers, well, that's the next challenge. There is no doubt about the buzz surrounding electric cars this year. Major car makers are betting big on the technology. But will it pay off? One filmmaker thinks so, and his new film looks at the role the electric car will play in the future of the automotive industry. Lugging in instead of filling up. This year, many consumers will get their first chance to buy an electric car. Electric models from Nissan and GM are now sold in the U.S. and Europe. But this isn't the first time a major car maker has gone electric. Rewind to 1997. GM released the EV1. The electric car is here. Not quite, it turns out. Only 1,000 EV1s were produced, available only for lease in California and Arizona.
A few years later, GM decided to pull the plug, repossessing the cars and destroying them. The Detroit Giants said that the technology simply wasn't ready. Many of the early converts were disappointed, including Chris Payne. We had an amazing experience with this car. And one day they said, we're taking the cars back. And it wasn't just my car, it was all these cars. So we started digging down to see what had happened. And it turned out that a variety of forces had kind of come together to kill this generation of cars. So that's why we made the film, to kind of make a murder mystery out of this whole story. His 2006 film, Who Killed the Electric Car, became a cult hit. It chronicled the short life of electric cars in the late 90s, which arrived as a result of tighter restrictions on air pollution in California. The film didn't shy away from laying blame. The culprits in the film ranged from the oil companies to the car makers themselves. In 2011, it is a radically different climate. Enter Payne's new documentary, The Revenge of the Electric Car. This time, electric cars are going mass market. There's a degree of excitement around electric vehicles we hadn't seen before. The film follows four leaders in the field. Former GM Vice Chairman Bob Lutz, Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn. You need to predict the future, prepare for it. If it happens, we'll be ready. Electric car enthusiast Greg Abbott and Tesla founder Elon Musk. Yeah, until we see every car on the road being electric, we will not stop. This big surprise is that electric cars are coming back as fast as they are. Some people are, you know, wondering whether our, our film is going to be too corporate friendly in a sense. But my, my intention is electric cars need to be in the marketplace. We haven't been able to buy them. If the corporations are going to help us buy them, then, then we're going to tell that story. The electric cars featured in the film are currently available only in select markets. So for many around the world, we'll have to wait until spring for the film and even later for the cars. Is it good to eat? I mean, yes. only... Why is that? It gives proteins like the other animals. After the break, food for thought. In the Philippines, a new government program aimed at feeding a generation. Waste not, want not. We look at how one project in Japan is trying to make better use of the food we eat.